Hello again, so today we're going to be servicing my Nissan Note. It's, it's this model, the one that looks like this with the big bug eyes. Uh, it's a 2010, but this would also work for similar age Micras which have uh, the same engines. This is a 1.4 engine. Okay, so things we're going to do today are we're going to change the oil and the oil filter. We're going to change the air filter, which is, believe it or not, hidden in here. And we're going to do the spark plugs as well. The spark plugs necessitate you having to take all this off. So it is a bit of a faff, but it's because the spark plugs are in the top of the engine with long plug extenders on. So first thing we've got to do is remove all the bolts around the outside that hold this thing on. You also need to unclip a few things, like here and here so we can get this out the way and then we can do each of the spark plugs. Okay so instead of having you wait watching me undo all the bolts I'll just quickly go round where they all are. So one here, one under here, one here, the two that are on this kind of heart shaped thing, one down here at the front, one there and there's also a really sneaky one low down in there. I don't know if I can see it. Probably not. Now, so when you've undone this one, make sure you get this last one because it's really easy to forget it. And I've noticed on this, I've already had this off, someone has broken a leg on this. And I think what they've done is they've undone all of the bolts that set that one and then forced this off and snapped this off. It is only plastic after all. So this will now lift off. You will feel a little bit of resistance because there's some little rubber uh, joints in here for the induction. Well, I'll show you then when we get the top off. So you just lift this up now and take it off. Now, another thing I've undone is at the top here, if I can show you it. Obviously, you need to unclip all these plugs. So there's one here, there's a pipe here, another pipe here that's connected to the top, and a plug here. Now this this one, I just undo the nut on the end which I which I put there. It just gets this out of the way. It just makes it easier for you to just move that out of the way and then lift this off. The the next thing to do before you lift the top off is to undo these clips. These are for the air filter. There's uh, just one on the side and one on the front and then it just enables you to lift this up without having to take all this uh, air input pipe gubbins you can just leave that in place. Alright we've got the top off now this is it kind of upside down where it would be like that you see the air filter which looks in pretty good nick actually you do if you want to remove it completely you have to just pull out these little plastic things attached to this pipe it's just a vent pipe and this that's connected to that Thing we unbolted before. You can leave those connected if you just want to lift it up to get to the spark plugs which are here under the, under these coil packs and these are the rubbers that I was talking about that they, they, you can just feel a little bit of suction when you're trying to pull this off and you might find that some of these rubbers end up on this bit. Don't worry about that just leave them where they are and they'll go back in when you press the top on. I've removed mine completely because as you can see Someone that serviced this in the past forgot about the bolt that was hidden at the back and has wiggled this about so much that it snapped the leg off. So I'm going to attempt to arrow dike this back in place while I do the spark plugs and everything else. Okay, while the arrow dike <laughs> start again. <clears throat> okay, while the arrow dike is curing on my uh, repair, these are the spark plugs. KH16TT, these are Denzos. I got all of this in a kit off eBay, believe it or not. Four spark plugs, an air filter, oil filter, cabin filter, and the oil for 50 quid. So, spark plugs. These are the coil packs. Newer cars don't have a single coil, they have one for every spark plug. So you need to undo, undo the Phillips at the top, do them one at a time. This will lift out, quite, quite long and the spark plug is quite deep into the engine so this just un just pull this off it's got a rubber seal on it it'll go pop when you pull it off and then get the spark plug wrench I use one of these kind 
mainly because it's got a little rubber washer in there which grabs hold of the spark plug and pulls it out for you which is much easier and it makes the new one easier to put in. Okay we'll start with the first one just undo the Phillips. These can get quite tight these screws. If it's really really tight I would probably suggest that rather than using a screwdriver you can see it's hex head so you could probably get a socket on there to get give you a bit more purchase on the bolt. This then just lifts out. It's quite long and it's a bit of a challenge with the lead length but that's what fits on the top of the spark plug. The spark plug is now down in that hole so you dangle the spark plug wrench in there they're usually not too tight. Just undo the spark plug. I tend to change these every year mainly because it's just so cheap to do that. You could probably get away with doing these a lot less than that. Two or three years maybe. It's a bit awkward doing it one-handed. As you can see the air filter looks almost brand new. It's almost a shame to change it. So just keep turning, you'll feel when it's loose, which it isn't yet. Cut this bit out. Okay, and there's the spark plug. Let's have a look at the state of it. So again, not, not really that bad. This car doesn't do that many miles to be honest. And you could probably leave those in. But that's not what this video is about, so new spark plug time. So new spark plug looks a lot nicer. Drop it in the hole, it, because of the rubber thing, look it hangs in the socket so you've got a bit more control over where it goes. And just screw the new one back in. Okay, it's all the way in now, just give it don't go mad, just tighten it up. And then back in with the plug and the coil pack, line up the hole, screw back in. Screw it down. And again, you don't have to do these too tight, it's only holding the thing in there and it'll just be an annoyance to get out next time. So, same with all the next three, I'll not bother showing you those. And then we'll change the air filter and put the top back on. Right, so we've got all four spark plugs changed, screwed back in again. Believe me, that is a new air filter. <laughs> it does look nice and clean on the back where the other one was a bit dark and had a few bits of detritus in it. I'm going to leave this until the end to give my Araldite time to set. So we'll do the oil and the oil filter next and show you that. So jacking the car up. Nissan's have a jacking point here. There's like a little bend of metal you can see. I've cushioned it with a rag just to get that up in the air. I've, I know I bang on about this. I've jammed an axle stand under there just to protect me. I'm not going to properly axle stand the car both sides because I'm not going to be under there for long. If that jack fails, you'll probably be seriously injured. Invest in some axle stands. Also, that back wheel, it's got a wooden block behind it because this, the one on this side is off the ground. So, safety first. Here's our oil catch tank. When you buy one of these, make sure you take this plug out as well as this one. Otherwise, when the oil goes glugging in there, the air has got nowhere to go. So it then just throws the oil all over the place. If, if you open this one, the air can easily escape. Uh, believe me, I know from experience. I really suggest buying one of these. You'll get your money back on it many times over if you're servicing your own car and you've already saved a ton of money doing it yourself. So next to take the sump plug out and let the oil out. Now on these Nissans, if you find the exhaust pipe, which is here, with the silver heat guard on, the sump plug is where my finger is now. See if I can get a better look at it. So it's this one here. Now in the kit I bought, you get a brand new one. So we'll have a look at that next. Okay, the sump plug comes in one of those packets, you know, that devil's plastic that you can never get into. So I've had to cut this with a knife. New sump plug, and most importantly, 
copper washer. Do make sure to remember the copper washer because that's essentially what's doing the sealing. Obviously copper's softer when you nip it up, that's what's making the seal. So next job is to crack off the old one. It's a 14mm socket to get the old one off and also let all the old run out and then we'll put the new plug back in. Right, the whole car only takes about 4 litres of oil and this is a 10 litre oil catch can so we've got plenty of room. Throw that one away, get the new one and we'll just put the new sump plug back in and, and you don't really have to do it tight, just enough to squash that copper washer. Okay so the new, the new sump plug is in and give the area a bit of a wipe because it'll be covered in oil. And then next is the fun job. There's the L filter at the back of the engine, about halfway up. Um, you need to put the catch can underneath that area because obviously quite a lot of oil is in that filter. And with it being horizontal, thank you Nissan, oil is going to tip out of that, whatever you do. And it's going to run down the back of the engine and into your face if you're not careful. So make sure you're out of the way when you do it. Um, I've got a... Uh, oil filter wrench because sometimes you cannot get these off for love and the money so we'll, we'll see how we go it might not be that tight across your fingers well that bent went about as well as I expected it to oil down the arm so I had to dash off and clean the oil off obviously petroleum products aren't very good for your skin here's the new filter got a cellophane seal on the end quite a small filter and because it fits horizontally you can't pre-fill this, it's usually good practice to pre-fill the oil filter so when you start the engine there isn't that gap of oil filling the filter first before it gets into the engine. But ho hum, thanks for Nissan, so we need to take this off and the little rubber ring there, it's good practice just to smear a bit of old oil on that ring just to help it seal and then screw it back in on the back of the engine sort of firmly hand tight, don't it up too tight because like that one, it's a real struggle to get them off otherwise. So I've given the oil container a good old wipe down, put the plugs back in. This will go off to our local household recycling centre where they've got a big oil tank you can put your used engine oil in. Please don't tip it down the drain. Uh, the car, we're finished underneath for now, so we can come back down off the jack. Just make sure you go underneath and wipe any excess oil, especially off any exhaust pipes, which obviously will cause a bit of smoke once you start to get warm. And then we can go back to putting the top of the car back on. Right, so the Araldite seems to have worked its magic. That's certainly firm enough to put back on and any further curing can happen while it's sat there. So we just have to turn this upside down and fit it back on and bolt it back up again. So the first job is to line up those little inlet pipes and push them into the rubbers. You'll feel them go in. You can use the holes here either side to make sure you're in the right position. Make sure all these other pipes you took off and stuff are in the way and push that home and it's sat on the holes. Don't worry about this bit. This is, all, this is where the air filter is. This will clip up easily after we've got all the bolts in. So just go around, put in the bolts, back in the holes doing those up, pipes back on, clips back in, okay bolts in, there, there, two here, one there, one there, the two either side of the heart shaped thing and two down there. Now I found that if you buy a knuckle, let's use the rust on mine, um, if you buy a knuckle it's easy to get these last two, otherwise you're fishing around at the back with a spanner and it's easy to drop stuff down the back of the engine. Okay so now putting things back, this pipe back on with the clip, push that one back in, I've put the nut back on this assembly with a blue connector, that wire bundle there has two little slots it pushes into that connects to this connector and then the pipe goes in these little hose clips and again just squish this with some pliers to get it on and then let go and it holds the pipe on. 
We're essentially done there, just apart from the air filter housing. You just need to lift that up, and these little metal clips, just clip, there's only two, one there and the one at the front, clip them back on, and then we'll try and start doing the oil fill. So the air filter's back in. If you struggle with this, what I've found is, if, the, if you push the air filter in and hold it in place with your finger, so it's inside this bit, you've got enough room then to push this bottom part in. Now the way this fits is there's two tabs at the back which go into little little hooks. So you put them in first, pull it up and then just clip these clips down. It is a bit of a faff but you can do it. So time for the oil, here's a full five litres. I've got a fancy down funnel but you can use a normal funnel. This one works nicely because it fits the hole perfectly and doesn't flap about. Now do be careful that there is a silver paper seal on these. Don't drop it in the oil. I have rescued this silver paper from sumps of cars before. That's not a good thing. So, put about three and a half litres in and then we'll dip it. Keep dipping it, put a bit in, dip it, put a bit in until you're at the right point. Right, so if we check the dipstick, can you see? I don't think you can see that, but that's at just the right point. That's about... Ooh, can I get it in one handed, he says. God. No is the answer. There we go. So that leaves us just over a litre and a half left out of five litres, which you can use for topping up. I'll just let the funnel drain down, and then just the cabin filter left to do, and resetting the service clock. Okay, second to last job, probably one of the awkward, most awkward jobs on this whole thing is the cabin air filter, or the pollen filter. It goes this way, you'll see there's like a little plastic tab. That's the bottom, and you'll notice it's quite squishy like, like that way, because to get these in, you have to kind of squash them a little bit to get them in, and as you push them in, release it. Uh, it's a bit of a challenge to get to, so in this interior, here's the glove box. Steering wheel on that side, yes, sorry Americans, on the correct side. So, it's under there. So about, if you can see where my hand is, I've got my finger on the tab there. So you really have to do this by feel. So you grab the tab, pull the old one out, and then bend the top down like that to make it thinner, push it in, and push it in until it locates. It's not that difficult, it's just a bit of a faff. Um, I'm not going to be able to film this because I can't do this and hold the camera as well and a difficult set of tripod up in the interior of a car, so you just have to believe me. So I've managed to get it out. Uh, what I did was I got a pair of pliers and grabbed hold of the tab. You can then give it a proper old yank. Um, in fact, you can see I've broken the tab off getting it out. Uh, and I've, just look how filthy that is, that's only a year old. So it just shows you what you could have been breathing in. On my car you can see it's still set to 166 miles. You press within 10 seconds the right hand side button. Which isn't now working. That makes it flash. Then you press it again. 12,000 miles. You wait for 5 seconds or less <laughs> and then that should be it so if we turn the ignition off and back on again bingo service in 12,000 miles so just to pricey that ignition on within a few seconds you have to be pressing this button hold it in for three seconds the mileage will flash you press it again it will go to whatever in your country is the next service interval so 12,000 mile in this case you wait five seconds, or until this display turns back to mileage, ignition off. Job done. Right, so that's it. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, click the bell icon, like, do all that stupid stuff that you do on social media. And thanks very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.